Good afternoon, folks. It's 1.55 p.m. 1.55 p.m., February 5th, 2020. It's on a Wednesday afternoon. How y'all doing today? This is Raymond X, the Prophet, and this is the Word for Day Part 2 for February 1st, 2020. Once again, this is the Word for Day Part 2, February 1st, 2020. Let's get right into the Word of God today. And today, I'm going to talk to you about this uh, journal entry I had. At 6.51 p.m., January 31st, 2020, this is Jesus speaking, Go your way, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go, sin no more. Go your way, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go and sin no more. This is Jesus speaking. It's found in these books of the Bible, the Gospel, several places in the Gospel. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34, key verse 34. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 35 through 43. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. And the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 2 through 15. And finally, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. So let's go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. Mark 5, 25-34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but, but, rather, but rather grew worse. When she had heard about Jesus, she came in behind, the crowd, behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made world. well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude throng you, and you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 20-22. Matthew 9, 20-22 And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around. When he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 36-50 Luke 7, 36-50 then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man... If he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. When they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who gave for him. I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 35 through 43. Luke 18, verses 35 through 43. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging and hearing a multitude. Passing by, he asked what it meant. 
So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before him warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 43-48. Luke 8, 43-48. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for twelve years, had spent all her life on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garden. Garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said that her daughter be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 2-15. through 15. John 5, 2-15. through 15. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. Then whoever stepped in first at the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and he had already in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want me to made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool, when the water is stirred up by while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, Then who may be well? He who may be well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is this man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, the multitude being in that place. And afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See that you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is who without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one, but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are there accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Okay, folks and family, at 6.53 p.m., January 31st, 2020, He healed their sicknesses and diseases. He removed their infirmities by the power of His blood and the Holy Spirit. He healed their sicknesses and diseases. He removed their infirmities by the power of His blood and the Holy Spirit. This is found in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, Psalm 34, 19, Psalm 41, 4, Psalm 103, 2 and 3, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6, Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, John chapter 10, verse 10, and John chapter 14, verses 12 through 13, Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, 2 
Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and finally Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 6. So let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15 and 26. And said, If diligently you heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Psalm 34, verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Psalm 41, verse 4. Psalm 41 and 4, I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, and who heals all your diseases. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of, for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and help to all their flesh. Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Jeremiah 33 and 6. Behold, I will bring it health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal them the abundance of peace and truth. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, they will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. John chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. John 14, verses 12 and 13. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If we ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 6. Acts 3 and 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Nazareth, rise up and walk. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Okay, folks, I found the next entry in my journal at 6.54 p.m., January 31st, 2020. Jesus turned six jugs of water into wine. That is, Jesus turned six vessels, jugs of water, into wine. This is found in the book of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. John 2, 1 through 10. On the third day there was a wedding in, in Canada of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your... Concern has to do with me. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there was there now there was set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots of water, and they filled them up to the brim. 
And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have the good, kept the good wine until now. Okay, folks and family, the song I have for you for Spotify is New Wine by Hillsong Worship. New Wine by Hillsong Worship. I'll post that Spotify web about album link in the description box below. And I'll also post the YouTube link you see here in the description box below as well. Okay, the next entry in my journal is at 6.55 p.m. January 31st, 2020. The power of the Holy Spirit is with you and me. Embrace Him. Do not resist Him. He will guide you into all truth. The power of the Holy Spirit is within you and me. Embrace Him. Do not resist Him. He will guide you into all truth. So it's found in these books of the Bible. John 1 and 33. Matthew 1 and 20. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Luke chapter 3 verses 21 through 22. Acts chapter 19 verses 5 and 6, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, Acts 7 and 51, Acts chapter 6 verses 9 and 10, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 31, the Gospel of Mark chapter 3 verse 29, and the Gospel of John chapter 16 verses 13 through 15. So let's go to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 33. John 1 and 33. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 20. Matthew 1 and 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. Second Peter 1 and 21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Luke 3, verses 21 and 22. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Acts 19, verses 5 and 6. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians 1 and 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. I see Isaiah 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit, so He turned Himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4 and 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Then there arose some from which is called the synagogue, the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Sicilia and Asia, disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom of the Spirit of which he spoke. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Acts seven fifty one, You stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so did you. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. Matthew 12 and 31. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy for forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven, men. Mark chapter 3, verse 29. Mark 3 and 29. But he who, has, but he who has blasphemies against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, 
for the subject to eternal condemnation, because they said he has an unclean spirit. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. The Gospel of John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Okay, folks, the family, the next journal entry is 6.56 p.m., January 31, 2020. Jesus washed the feet of, of his twelve chosen disciples. Jesus washed the feet of his twelve chosen disciples. This found in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. John 13, 1 through 17. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father has given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose in supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who bathe needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew he, who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So he washed all their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again. He said to them, You know what I have done to you. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to also wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. All right, folks and family, on the Word for Today, Part 2, February 1st, 2020, this is the last journal entry. 6.56 p.m., January 31st, 2020. And who is my neighbor? The one who is less fortunate than you. And who is my neighbor? The one who is less fortunate than you. This is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 31. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 14. Romans, chapter 15, verse 2. Romans, chapter 13, verses 9 through 10. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 2. And finally, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 12. So let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Luke 10, 25 through 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounding him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said to him, He who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 31. Mark 12 and 31. 
And the second like it is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Galatians 5 and 14 Galatians 5 and 14 For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Romans chapter 15, verse 2 Romans 15, verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good and into edification. Romans chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. Romans 13, 9 and 10. For the commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm toward a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And finally, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. That is, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify song I have for you, Spotify worship song, So Will I, 100 Billion X, this is the live version. So Will I, 100 Billion X, the live version. This is by Hillsong Worship. And I'll post the Spotify with that link to that song below in the description box. Also, I'll post in the description box below this YouTube link you see here. All right, folks and family, that is the Word for Today, Part 2, for February 1st, 2020. This is the Word for Today, Part 2, for February 1st, 2020. Love is the law. Love is the law. Number one, love God. Number two, love your neighbor. Number three, love yourself. Number four, tell others about Jesus. Okay, folks and family, I want to thank you for your 28 minutes of time. This is Raymond X, the prophet. God bless you and everything you do. Take care of yourselves. Remember, Jesus is coming soon, and so is judgment. Today is your decision day of decision making, your day of salvation, your day of repentance. Don't forget that judgment is also coming soon, too. God loves you, and so do I. Take care of yourselves. Be good and kind to one another. Remember, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Remember that one more time. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Take care, folks. I love you all very much. Bye-bye for now. I'll see you on the next video upload. Lord willing.